build them up. Yes. Establish them. Yes. Allow them to be strong in faith. Yes. So much so that the enemy has to flee. Yes. Every assignment, every obstacle, every roadblock that the enemy has set, we rebuke it. In the name of Jesus. And we declare victory, we declare healing, we declare restoration, we declare strength and power and energy. In the mighty strong name of Jesus. Yes. And we declare it done. Yes. And we give you praise for victory. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
talking to me because I was busy trying to shout. About a couple minutes in to the shower and talking, which is awkward, but okay. <laughs> and notice he had something in his mouth. And he would periodically, in that short period of time, he would he was bitten into the sink because it was like the sinks were right here and there was an opening for the shower. And then he came around and he did something. Now, I don't know how you feel, but he had tobacco in his mouth. And all of a sudden he spit on me. He, he spit on me. Now, you have to understand, I told you it was 1967, possibly early 1968. And fact of life, race relations, one of them at that time. And what he was doing was, he was spitting on me because I didn't look like him. I gotta be honest with you. Something spitting on you was not a healthy thing. And, and, and I'm going to be truthful, when he spit on me, my first reaction was to, no, we don't spit back. <laughs> You're not going to yell with that kind spit. But because of my circumstance and my lack of a tie in the shop, <laughs> get together and figure out what to do. If I would have fought him, I would have killed him. Because first of all, let me tell you, I was six foot two and about 220 pounds. And he was about five, maybe eight or five nine. And couldn't have weighed more than about 160 pounds with two 10 pound purses in his back pocket. <laughs> I, I, I would have hurt him. And I would have put myself in serious peril. And because he ran, I couldn't go after him. <laughs> I wasn't going to try and start screaming. <laughs> so I thought about it, and I'll give you the rest of the story right quick and read your digest for him. I talked to him later, and as it was, we became friends. And he had come from a family where his grandfather had told him his grandfather was one of the exalted wizards of Ku Klux Klan. And we actually became friends. Simply because I didn't respond the way I wanted to respond and that would have gotten me a lot of trouble. No matter how I look at it. So, <laughs> he spit on me. Y'all. <laughs> He spit on me. The good thing is they were so and bar. <laughs> we're not a bit close by. And I was able to wash it out of my system, man. Better things happen because of it. But, but I, I want us to look at this text. Because here, if, if, if you read, and I'm going to ask you what you see here. What do you really see in the text? Because the Bible says that Jesus came to the says no. And, and, and they brought a blind man to him. The crowd had expectations. Jesus had been there before. They had seen his miracles. They knew what Jesus' possibilities were. So they brought the man to Jesus, and with their expectations, they said to him, basically, just, just heal me. Just touch him. We know by 
by your power, if you just touch them, that a miracle can happen. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the text good, and, 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 and you're reading the text, Jesus does something strange. He's in the middle of town, and what he does now is he takes the man by the hand. And he walks out of the town. Now, I, 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 I don't know if you've read this before, but you see, this is the story that Jesus didn't heal for the first time. It took him two times to do it, but I, 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 I didn't really understand what was going on until I really looked at the text. You see, the, the first thing that happened is Jesus does the unexpected, and he leaves the crowd behind. See, sometimes when God wants to deal with you, he needs you away from the noise and distraction and the crowd, and away from the expectation of the crowd, because the crowd put an expectation on Jesus. Just to touch him. And Jesus takes the hand of the blind man, and he walks out of town. Now, now, now let me tell you what I see. I don't know what you see, but I'm what I see. I see a blind man trusting Jesus. That, that doesn't really know him. That, that doesn't, have, that doesn't have any track record with him. But he trusts him because he allowed Jesus to lead him. Down the dusty streets and out of town. Yeah. Now, now think about it. Think, think about it. Come on, come on. Think with me. Do you remember the first time you fell in love? Yep, y'all remember that? One of the first things that really meant a lot to us is if a young lady or young man let us hold her hand. That's all we want to do, hold her. I want to hold you. Do you remember that first time you touched someone's hand? What that communicated to you? That communicated to you that there was some bonding happening. So we see Jesus now bonding with this man who has no sight and he leads him out of town. It's like taking a long walk with somebody you care about. So, so we know that this blind man had to trust Jesus. Now I'm going to put a peg in that story right here. And I, I want you to look in your Bible, if you have a Bible, starting at the first verse and reading through the first pericope, you ought to find that this is the miracle of Jesus feeding the 4,000. Does your Bible say anything about that? Yes. Then you'll see, if you read through, the blind man healed at the face of it. And right after that, you see Peter's confession of who Christ was right after that. So it's caught in between two major events. And, and, and it did not escape me that those two major events was very analogous of what stuck in the middle. This story about a blind man not being able to see. And Peter's confession of Jesus as Messiah. And, and, and so I, be, I begin to connect that this story really isn't so much about the blind man, although he's stuck in the middle. But it, it, it really is about our unbelief and our inability to see who Jesus really is and to understand Christ's mission. See, if you read about the feeding of the 4,000, Jesus even asked them, what, you, I, I, I'm trying to let you see who I am. I'm trying to get you to understand what I can do. And still the disciples who had seen Jesus Perform many miracles, did not know who he really was. 
Even after the miracle of the feeding of fish and the blind man, when Jesus asked, who do men say that I am? It was very evident that people didn't really know he was because they thought he was one of the prophets. They thought he would draw the Baptist come from the dead. They had all kinds of answers of who people thought Jesus was. They didn't see clearly. They couldn't understand clearly who Jesus was. And then we find Peter on the other end opening his mouth and saying something, and he doesn't even really fully understand who Jesus is. And he said, you're the Christ. You're the son of the living God. When Jesus told him it was necessary for him to die, Jesus, Peter said, no, it ain't going to happen like that, Lord. So Peter had some inclination to who Jesus was, but he didn't fully understand. Because in order to be Messiah, the chosen one, the one that was going to bring restoration of the nation of Israel and power to Israel, he had to die. But Peter was saying, it's not going to be so, Lord. So we see that even Peter didn't have full understanding of who Jesus was. So stuck in between those stories. See, even with all the empirical evidence, they forgot who Jesus was and what Jesus had done. And, 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 and I, I'll say to us, don't ever forget what God has done in your life. Amen. Don't ever forget what God has done in your life. And, and the reason I say that to you is because like the disciples, when we forget, we get all jammed up and we think that God can't do or things are going by us because we forget what's happening today and what will happen tomorrow. Let me tell you the reason why I'm a believer in God. I know the God I serve is more than able to do what he's done in my life before. All I've got to do is stand still and stay myself and call on the name of the Lord. That's all I need to do. Because I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter how long he takes, he's going to show up. Jesus is going to do what Jesus do. I know you can't make me doubt it because I know too much about it. The disciples, they lived, they slept, they ate with Jesus. They saw all that, but yet they forgot about his ability. So my question to you today is, do you know who Jesus is? And do you understand what he's doing in your life? Do you see Jesus for who he is? See, that, that's why we took our saying, our motto, our theme for the year, fully complete in him. Do, do, do you really understand that? Do you really believe that? Or are you like the disciples and others who had seen, you only think you really might, maybe, possibly could, ought to, maybe, should, maybe, I'm, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because the thing about it is very clear in God's word, if you have doubt in your heart, a double-minded person is what? Unstable in all their ways. Let not that person think they shall get anything from God. So if you're doubting, if you're questioning, if you're reasoning, if you're not believing that God can do what he says he can do for you, you're going to be living in life. I don't, I don't, I don't know about you, but that's not the to be. I have to believe that my father is more than able. So, so, so the text that we're talking about for the next 20 minutes, do you really know, are you seeing Jesus clearly? Because I, I, I really think that this is 
not a failure on Jesus' part. What I see in the text is a parable. Now, a parable is what? A story. But how many of you know that sometimes when people can't understand the story, there are illustrations. And, and what I think is happening here is that this example of what he does with the blind man is really a living parable. Jesus taking the folks to school. He wants to show them something. Now, now you may not get on board with me yet, but let's just wait for a few moments. See, Jesus had never taken someone's hand before and walked with him. And now we see that Jesus takes his hand and he leads him out of town. Leads him away to a place far from the crowd to do what Jesus do. Now I know it's not good English, but it sounds good. <laughs> Jesus was going to do what Jesus did. And what Jesus does ought to shock you. Jesus did three things. The first thing he did is he turned to the man. That's the first thing. He turned to the man. Now he had been leading him. And now he confronts him. He turned to the man. That's the first thing. Jesus' 
time and ancient time, people thought differently. They believed there was healing power in human survival. That's what they believed. And let me tell you something. We, we kind of still believe it today. <laughs> now y'all laughing. When you cut your finger or burn your finger, what's the first thing you do? <laughs> Why? Because there is a healing presence in our saliva. Okay, I think I can feel this. Because <laughs> there's a million germs in there too. <laughs> and that's another sermon for a whole other day. But they believe that Jesus was able, and, 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 and they believed that when Jesus touched him, now you don't want to miss this, Jesus spit and he touched. And then after the answer, Jesus touched again, and Jesus touching, and the power of the DNA, oh, so so. What, what, what's the DNA? Now, I don't know who, who's, who's medical here. Who's medical? All right, we'll confess up. <laughs> okay, who likes biology? <coughs> okay, who knows what the DNA stands for? What does DNA stand for? a 
a failed miracle? Man, Jesus didn't even have to touch him. Jesus could have just said, see, and he would have saw it. So here we have a living parable. We see this man, and, and the first thing he says is, I've seen men like trees. That means he had sight before. And see, some of us have been on the path where we've seen things before, but because people are talking to us, well, yeah. we're in a place of not believing now. Just like I tell you, we, 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 yeah, we have doubt. Exactly. Just because right now, there's something you believe in that you can't be toward Christ. But the Bible says you're completely Jesus gave us spiritual gifts that we may be mature. The teaching, the preaching, and all that. That's something we are mature in Christ. Do you hear me? Amen. Everything that you need, you have. But you allow other people to influence you. Jesus is taking this man and teaching us something. And, and we, we have to see what he is saying. This man had seen before, but now he's beginning to see again. And, 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 and Jesus teaches us that this healing was done in stages. Because for some of us, we've got to go through stages. We've got to see things to believe things. But the third thing is, Jesus' partial healing does not suggest that Jesus' powers are failing. Jesus is using a healing as a living parable. And, 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 and this miracle reveals to us how God opens the eyes of those of us who are spiritually blind. See, some of y'all can't take stuff. Some of y'all can't handle stuff. See, some of y'all, listen. You ready for this? Some of y'all are in the shape you're in because you're not ready for what God has for you. See, I'm a believer. If you don't know how to handle a dime, God ain't gonna give you a dollar. <laughs> if, 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 if you don't know how to handle health, I'm just going to say some of the things that we wind up with, we wind up getting because we don't look back. Peter didn't recognize God's touch. But we, we need to recognize the touch of God through the teaching and the preaching and realize that God is trying to open blinded eyes. But you know what? We're like man. Remember Dan? He was a leper. Remember he was a gold bathing in the water of the joy and he said, oh my God. Literally, oh my God. Aren't all the waters here better than they are in the Jordan? I don't have to do it your way. I have been able to go in a clean river. He wanted to set his parameters. He wanted to set his perspective on how the art to be done. But the word of God said, no, be in the Jordan seven times. How many times has God spoken to you and told you to do this or do that, to see this or see that, and you want to tell God how you need to get it? We want to determine the way, the how. Right now, Jesus told you to take out five hundred dollars and give it to me. Y'all would have to come and boss his mind. $500. Now, I'm going to tell you, I don't need your money. I got money. I got paper. But maybe God is trying to do something through New Season Ministry that can be a blessing not only to New Season Ministry, but the community where New Season Ministry is at. And you won't see that. You won't even think about that. All you don't think about is my $500 and my God. So God has 
to work with us through stages. And, and, and he waits patiently on us. And he moves our inability to see to full comprehension. He gives us a second touch. What do you see? You got a woman to look in front of you. Look on the front of the boots. What do you see? You see words. You read words. But you don't see the possibility of what you can be and what God can do in your life in those words. God wants you to receive the power of his presence and the spirit of his word, which is life. God wants to be able to brag on you because when you look good, guess what? God looks good. But if you can't handle it, he's not going to give it to you. Tell your neighbor, read your own habits and can't handle it. You can't handle it. You see, when you handle it, the word and the presence of God, that means there's some people you're going to stay away from. That means there's some places you can't go. What do you see? You look at the scripture, the text, and you see a failed miracle. That's what you see. And you don't understand why it failed, but okay. I read my sin. You don't see God. Christ teaching you because you're only reading a little bit of what the text is about. <coughs> now, let me say this one before I finish. God is not trying to move through you necessarily in a miraculous way. See, that's one of the things he said about the people. They were looking for a sign, they were looking for a wonder. Real growth. And, and, and the presence, the real presence of God is not tied into a is not tied into something happening. We see something. It's not tied into miraculous. See, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for signs and wonders. We're looking for something to happen to. Clearly read in our thinking that God is moving, but I'm here to tell you that it's grace that has saved you and grace that keeps you. Yes. Not the miraculous. Not the miraculous. If you need a second touch, if you need that second touch, the third and the fourth, and that's my life. Jesus doesn't stop. God doesn't stop with just one or two touches. Sometimes he gives you more than he's trying to get through to you. I'm here today to tell you, you need to drop the scales off your eyes. You need to let Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm talking about four that, 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 that's, that's, that's what I see here in the text. But I hope to move beyond the text into the practical reality of your life. Are you still holding on to old stuff that's keeping you from seeing clearly? Are you holding on to old beliefs because your grandmama told you when you were three years old and you still remember grandma's word and grandma's been gone for 45, 55, 100, I don't know, years. But we still, no, no, I'm, I'm interested. I was in seminary. And one of my professors told me something about God's word that conflicted with my grandmother, and I was so wanting to hold on to what grandma said, but grandma was limited in what she knew. When I looked at the text and saw the text really said, I had to change it in her. Because I was wrestling with whether grandma was going to write or the book write. And when I knew that I had to understand the book, I understand that Grandmama wasn't trying to read me this way. Grandmama was giving what she understood at the time. God gave me clarity through the scriptures, through his word, and I had it once. Because it's not what people told you. We need to quit regurgitating stuff. We need to quit regurgitating. We need to quit plagiarizing. We need to write our own narrative based on what we clearly see 
because God has touched us. Not once, but even twice. Father, we thank you this day that you do take you're, you are long suffering. Like, like, like the disciples, we, we, we become people who are learning.